Good morning, fellow ruminators. Good afternoon, rather. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we shall be talking about the presence or the arrival of the Kenyan military force to Haiti. So they have finally arrived, at least the first um, troops from Kenya, right, have arrived, the first batch of troops have arrived uh, from Kenya. So that's interesting now that we have been awaiting their presence or Haiti has been awaiting their presence and they have finally arrived. Now, it's interesting to note that also, you know, I must say before I begin that the Caribbean is about to experience, as it were, some very dark days. And we must understand that what is happening in Haiti is not devoid right? It's not, and that's the word, the body is not the word, but it is not, and is not, Haiti is not an entity unto itself, correct? And it's not going to be that, you know, Jamaica or the Dominican Republic or other countries in the Caribbean will not be impacted by what is about to take place in Haiti. We all will be impacted. The entire Caribbean region, particularly the islands who are closer or closest to Haiti, will be impacted by the military occupation. Now, some articles are already, already suggesting, have already suggested that what the US is doing, what Washington is doing, is really that they are actually having the Kenyans there first, preparing the ground for future American occupation. So the, what the U.S. wants to do is to occupy Haiti fully, but it's using the Kenyan forces among the other members of you know, the Caribbean country. And some other African countries are also going to be involved in this occupation, this military occupation of Haiti. Now, I am not hearing a lot in the media about the occupation, something that is very strange. We're not hearing a lot coming from the mainstream culture, the mainstream media um, about this occupation and the arrival of these troops. My understanding is that they arrived yesterday, June 25, and I'm producing this video as it were right now on June 26th, right? So they arrived yesterday. Now, let us look at what Dominican today is saying. I was trying to look if there was anything in the Gleaner, in the Jamaica Gleaner, but they seem not to be up and ready to be read online. I am not sure what is happening in recent times, maybe for a long time now, to the Gleaner. The Gleaner is not as alert as, as it should be. It's not, you know, producing news that they, I don't even understand how the Jamaican people keep up with what is happening in the world. Because when you look at the, the, the Jamaica Gleaner, not much is coming from it, right? It needs to upgrade, it needs to be upgraded, right? And the Gleaner, I'm calling up on you to do the work that you used to do years ago. But I think that, you know, after 2012, I've been seeing a very, very, a steep decline in the quality of news that is coming from the Jamaica Gleaner. It's almost like it's a tabloid. It's not a newspaper that is devoted to giving and rendering an accurate account and trying to inform the Jamaican people. That is something that is not good. It seems to me that Observer is even doing a better job. You know, at least they're up and running. And many times you click on the Venus website and the news is not coming up. It seems like the, the society is down or something is happening. I'm not sure what is happening behind the scenes. But Gleaner, please get your act together, right? You need to get your act together. But this is coming from the Dominican Today. Uh, Dominican Today is an online Dominican newspaper from the Dominican Republic that is actually published in English, right? And they do sometimes give some interesting sort of news items, right? So it's better to see what they're saying. And I think these, the stories I'm about to read to you, yeah, were published yesterday. So... We are seeing here yesterday published Kenyan police officers arrived in Katy today, and that was yesterday on June 25th, 2024. And it says thus, the first contingent of Kenyan police officers is set to arrive in Haiti within hours following President William Ruta's official deployment of 400 officers at an event in Nairobi. 
this deployment precedes Ruta's departure to lead a multinational mission authorized by the United States Security Council aimed at restoring peace in the Caribbean nation. And we said before that even though it's supposed to be a United Nations sanctioned uh, military occupation, <laughs> but it's really not, really. Um, it's really the Kenyan forces over there and they are, you know, they are detached from any United Nations rights that might be, um, that the Haitian people might have. So it means therefore that they can do anything there and Haitians will not be able to report them, right? It's almost like it's a paramilitary, it is a paramilitary occupation, if you will, right? Something that you have to understand, all right? So their rights can be suppressed, their rights can be denied. Kenya has a strong track record in peacemaking and conflict resolution. That's what they're saying here. The presence of our police officers in Haiti will bring relief to women, men, and children whose lives have been devastated by armed gang violence, stated Ruto, emphasizing their commitment to work with the international community towards sustainable stability in Haiti. Right? They always like this word. When you hear them saying this sustainable, right? This sustainable stability, everything, you have to have economic sustainability. Everything is sustainable. And we know that in many cases, if not in all cases, it's not going to be sustainable, right? It is not going to be sustainable. However, that is what they're telling us. And that is what I'm presenting to you. But I'm also suggesting that you use your brains to think and to look around what is happening in the world. We are too often credulous and we believe everything that our prime ministers and our presidents tell us. But something that is happening also that needs to be presented to you, right? And needs to be to come to the fore. And that is the fact that many people in many Kenyans have been, you know, actually protesting against what is happening, not only in Haiti, but they are also protesting um, against the economic situation that many Kenyans are actually experiencing or enduring in their country. So they are not putting the Kenyans, the Kenyan citizens are not particularly happy with what is happening. So they can see they're sending some black troops or some African troops to Haiti, but we must be aware that the Kenyans, right, are not particularly happy with what the government is doing. Right? And we are seeing in our world now where governments are doing things and they tell that the population is happy and they're sending their troops or doing whatever they're doing. And they call on the name or they pretend to be representing the populace when they are not representing the interests of the population. And something that you've got to understand, your presidents and your prime ministers often are not representing your interest. They are representing the interest of the global elites. Right? Global financial elites. That is what you've got to understand. Right? So you can protest all you will. I don't know if they will stop their agenda. It might stop for a while. It might put a little dent into their agenda. Right? But it's not going to fully stop it because they no longer respect us as citizens. That is what you've got to understand. So let's continue with the article. The ceremony uh, took place at the administrative police training school with deployment scheduled shortly despite existing legal challenges in Kenya prohibiting it. So we have again the legal, there are legal challenges in Kenya which are actually uh, you know, trying to prohibit the occupation of Haiti, the Kenyan occupation of Haiti. The officers spotted Part of a large contingent of 1,000 officers pledged by Kenya for the mission represent various police units and have received training across different specialized areas, including language proficiency. So they were actually learning the language of Haiti. Hopefully, they will be able to speak some Creole when they get there. Ruta's decision to deploy followed discussions last week with the Transitional Presidential Council, whose establishment in April was a prerequisite set by Kenya before dispatching personnel. Right? So in a parallel development, the United States sent a delegation to the 54th General Assembly of the Organization of American States in Paraguay yesterday. 
The delegation aimed to garner support for the forthcoming security mission in Haiti and to condemn human rights violations in Nicaragua. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who attended previous assemblies in Lima and Washington, delegated on the Secretary of State Richard Verma and Latin American Bureau Chief Brian Nichols to represent the U.S. interests in Asuncion. Right? So what to represent U.S. interests? Because it's not about freedom. It's about defending U.S. interests. And not to defend the interests of the masses of Americans there, but to defend the interests of the U.S. elites. That is what they're not saying. Right? It's not to defend the interest of the ordinary American citizen, right? But is to defend the interests of the U.S. financial elites, right? Those who control the military industrial complex and something that you've got to understand, right? So we have got to follow what is happening here because it is something that is going to affect the region and, per and perhaps also some states in the United States. We know that there is going to be a heavy traffic of Haitians, you know, emigrating, moving out of their countries, going to other Caribbean countries and to the US and possibly to other Latin American and Caribbean countries. We've got to be aware of it because this is going to be something that is not going to end well, if it will end at all. Right? This is going to be a nightmare, right? This is not something that we should be looking forward to, right? But it's happening and we have to deal with it. Now, there's coming and from you know another story that the Dominican Today brought, uh, and this was written on June 24, that's the day before yesterday, 2024. It says, presence of Haitian gang members reported in Dominican Republic. So already, while the troops were on their way, they're telling us that there are presence, there is a presence, I should say, of Haitian gang or gangs or gang members on Dominican soil, right? So there is a presence already. Just a day before the troops were dispatched, right? We are we have reports of a heavy a presence, some presence of Haitian gangs in the Dominican Republic on Dominican soil, something that is interesting. But, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody, you know, and the person was suggesting that there's not going to be any sort of effect, what the occupation, the military occupation of Haiti would not have any effect on neighboring Caribbean countries. And I'm saying, how could not that be? It has to be that it's going to have some effect. It's going to have some spillover. And I could see that gang members were going to cross borders. Right, and they're going to go to Jamaica. They're going to go to the the Dominican Republic. They're going to go around the Caribbean region, but possibly also to the U.S. Right, possibly to the U.S., perhaps Florida, because remember now that the guns come from the U.S. Right, there's a lot of connection with the violence and the guns that are being that are that the United States is flooding Haiti with. Right, we've got to make a connection, and many of you are not making the connection. We're thinking that it's just some gang members in Haiti, and the U.S. is sending its steam, right, to squash, as it were, right, that sort of violence. But what role does the U.S. have in the violence? Not only the U.S., but France and also Canada. What role are they playing? in the propagation of the violence that we're seeing in Haiti? That is the question. And some of you like to say, oh, you're speculating. I'm not speculating. I'm a thinker and I think. I'm a critical thinker and I have to ask questions, right? And I'm not sitting down like I the dots like many of you pretending to think. And everything you think, what you see is what you get. In politics, what you see is not what you get. Right, and you, that's why you have to ask questions. You're not going to pretend as if you know, and if you have all the solutions and you have all the facts, but you have to ask yourselves questions. Right, you have to always possess a healthy dose of skepticism. Right, particularly as it relates to all politicians or political leaders. 
right? Because they're not in office to defend the interest of the majority of its population, of the population. It's now time that we begin to understand, to appreciate these facts. But we don't want to, many of us think that, oh, we're just going to watch, wait and see, right? Wait and see until the troops come knocking at your door, right? And all of your rights have been, have, have vanished, right? All of your rights will eventually have vanished, will eventually vanish, right? And then you'll say, oh, I didn't know. How did this happen, right? How did this happen? That is what many of you will be saying after the fact. But after the fact, once your rights have already gone, right, then you will not get them back. Right? Once your rights have been relinquished, you know, have been eroded, then you will not get them back. That is it that we must understand. And many of the times we're not trying to grasp that. So we're hearing that the, in Santo Domingo in recent days, at least 10 members of Haitian gangs have crossed into the Dominican Republic, military sources informed El Nacional, report to Julio Gomez. So El Nacional is one of the newspapers in the Dominican Republic. That newspaper is written in Spanish, it's published in Spanish. So we have Kiskeya, the Kiskean authorities, Kiskeya, the northern name for the country, this was the indigenous name for the Dominican Republic, Kiskeya. All right, so when they're talking about Kiskeyan forces, um, Kiskeyan uh, authorities, it's just like the Indian name, the indigenous name for Jamaica was Zamaica, Zamaka, right? Zamaka, all right? So if you were to say Zamakan authorities, so here they're saying now the Kiskeyan authorities are, are actively searching for these individuals to arrest and deport them, all right? So we have already, they're suggesting 10 and they have their names here. I shall not call their names, but these are the names of the 10 gang members who are reportedly on Dominican soil as we speak. These are Haitian gang members who the news source here is suggesting are currently on Dominican soil. That is something that is not good. A notice from the Haitian National Police, which includes an arrest warrant for this group, was presented as evidence. These individuals are wanted for crimes such as murders, kidnapping, sexual assault, and armed robberies. So these are dangerous people, as they're suggesting. We don't know who these people are, but based on what they're suggesting, these are dangerous people who are on the run, right? And we are not certain if they will be caught. So many of these alleged criminals have escaped from Haitian prisons, while others are sought for their involvement in serious criminal activities under the protection of gangs operating in Haiti. These individuals reportedly entered Dominican territory through the border crossings of Perdenales, Jimani, Elias Pina, and Dajabor, according to the sources. And these are all um, sections of the Dominican Republic that share border with Haiti. So Haiti is currently facing severe turmoil due to the chaos caused by gangs operating in the country. The poorest in the Americas, despite being the first black nation to achieve independence. It is estimated that more than 1 million Haitians reside in the Dominican Republic. Right? You know, two things here that I must bring forward. One is, it is very interesting, might I repeat, that just on the eve of the dispatch of the Kenyan military forces that we are seeing, hearing about, you know, Haitian gangs fleeing to the Dominican Republic. Very interesting development, right? Very, very interesting development and quite coincidental, right? But there are lots of coincidences in the news, right? And we love to see them. And I hope that you're calling them out because we're living in a world of, you know, of lots of coincidence, right? Everything, just about everything is coincidental. But guess what? It's natural. That's the way how it should be, right? And we ought not to think, you know, nor are we to question, right? Anything 
all of these developments are happening and you know they're not connecting the dots are not connecting all the dots are being connected but we should not connect the dots right we should not connect the dots because we do not have that intellectual capacity right so we have to sit and wait for the authorities for the experts right to explain to us what really is happening because the experts are the ones who know it all and after all they are the ones who have the what the evidence right the empirical evidence and they will soon unveil the empirical evidence to us and people who are that nine is going are going to believe everything that the authorities or the experts tell them right because that's how we think that is how humanity is that simple and naive. Now, it suggests, it, it says here that, so we have about a, a million patients sitting here. But if you talk to the ordinary Dominican, it's just far more. They think it's probably three, four million patients living there. That's ridiculous to think that you have three million, four million patients in this country. There are a lot of patients in the Dominican. Public and since the unrest and the instability that we have been witnessing in Haiti, particularly after the death of Jovenel and Louise, um, you can see that there is a large presence of Haitians moving to the Dominican Republic because of the insecurity that is there. And I dare say now that now that we're learning that the multinational forces have arrived, the Kenyan forces have arrived, it means therefore that there's going to be further instability. I do not think that they're there to solve the gang related violence, right? So it means therefore that you're going to have many patients flee to other Caribbean territories, including the Dominican Republic, something that you have to be aware of and you must be um, examining and critically you know, assessing. So we have here prompting calls from the various Dominican sectors for their repatriation. So Dominicans are calling for the Haitians to be repatriated to their country. However, pressure from international organizations sponsored by the United States, Canada, and France limits any actions in that direction. Right? So that's interesting that the United States and France and Canada countries which are causing the chaos in Haiti, right? And it seems to be, I do, I, we're not sure 100% that they're also behind some of the paramilitary violence that we see in Haiti are suggesting that the Dominican Republic cannot repatriate Haitians, but then they're the ones causing the problem, right? They're the ones causing the problem. And because of the instability, because of the high levels of insecurity, patients are fleeing. Because, you know, who would not? Human beings want to live. It's our desire to live. And if we know that we can flee, we are going to flee. Right? That is a normal human reaction. Right. And sometimes, you know, I think I published, a, I made a video, was it last week when I was talking about racism? Why is there racist? Why are Dominicans, you know, racist? You know, why are they demonstrating racism against patients? Something of the sort. Right. Um, many of you didn't watch that video, but you should need to go and look at it because the fact of the matter is that I made the point that a lot of times the left wing politics, this sort of leftist ideology of racism, right, in which you blame one person or a group and call the other victims. And to some extent, there, there's some truth to it, but it's not the entire truth, right? So we can't just say the Dominican Republic is racist because you have a situation in which a situation that can be controlled, a situation that can be averted, because the whole situation happening in Haiti can be averted. But we have men who are avaricious, who are rapacious, like wild animals, who are seeking to extract and to rape and to plunder and to pillage Haiti of its resources. And they don't care. Right? They don't care. So the Dominicans have, are the ones who have to suffer and perhaps Jamaicans will have to do it. 
right, and other Caribbean territories, they will have to accept lots of Haitians coming into their territories, even though they don't have the resources to take care of the Haitians, then they're not even taking care of their own people or do not have insufficient resources to take care of their people. The majority of their people, that is true. It's not that they're you know, a minority of Jamaicans or Dominicans or other Caribbean people who are, you know, perhaps suffering, a lot are suffering, a lot are, are barely, you know, able to eke out, uh, you know, a way of life. They're barely surviving. Yet still, they are going to have to be loaded with the Haitian problem. And it's not the Haitian problem. Well, it's the Haitian problem, but it's not their making, right? They did not manufacture this problem. The US, France, and Canada are the countries which have manufactured the Haitian crisis, right? They have manufactured this Haitian crisis. And this is something that is going to spill over into other neighboring Caribbean territories, something that we've got to be aware of. It's time now that we begin to ask our prime ministers what really is happening and how are they going to deal with such a crisis. And we should be writing letters to the United States and to France and to Canada to stop this nonsense, right? to leave the Haitian people alone and their resources, let them deal with their resources, let them deal with solving their problems, right? And not to compound it even more, the problems. Because that's what is happening. Haiti has a lot of problems, yes, and so the problems are internal. Yes, they are. However, they are compounded when, you know, you have this sort of aggressive military occupation and overtaking, right? And I've done an, a, 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 an interview, which I'm going to publish probably after this video with um, Professor Jamie Lopere. And it's, I think it's now time for me to publish. I did that interview with her some two weeks ago and I'll try to publish it. I try to upload it tomorrow, right? So make sure that you watch this video, you like the video, because remember now that YouTube is actually, you know, suppressing information. They are censoring information and what I'm seeing for small channels, when the video is published, please like the video so the video can be dispatched, right? Because if between two hours, if you don't have so many viewers and so many likes on the videos, YouTube is not going to send out the video. That's what I'm realizing, that if having two hours having been passed, if two hours have passed and the videos are not liked, let's say you don't have at least 20 likes or you don't have at least 50 views, YouTube is going to say that nobody's interested in your video. And that is so stupid because there are people who might be interested, but they're at work, they're doing something, they're busy, and they don't have time to see the video at that moment when the video is uploaded, right? But YouTube is now interpreting the algorithms. You know, once two hours have passed, I'm watching it, I've been studying them. Two hours have passed and the video is not liked, doesn't have sufficient likes, and has not been viewed by a certain number of people, then the video is just going to be there and it will not be sent to the public, right? So it's, you know, make sure that you like the video, you try to view the video as soon as it's uploaded so that it can have enough viewers and YouTube will not be sending me the message that the video is not liked by people, <laughs> right? Because that's not true. And I understand that many of you are working, you are productive citizens, and you have to work. And sometimes the videos go to different parts of the world where the time is not the same. It might be night for, for, for some people, it might be morning, depends. And I don't think YouTube should be taking such the algorithms, but that's how it is programmed, right? It's an algorithm and it's programmed after two hours. And I have been studying this thing. They're not gonna send your videos. Um, and only you who share them and you need to respond. You need to comment so that the more you comment, it's the more that the algorithms, you know, uh, you're prompting the algorithms, you're, you're informing the algorithm that you like the video and that you are interacting with it. If you're not interacting with the video, it means therefore that YouTube will say, well, the people, the public is not interested. 
So don't believe that the videos are just uploaded and that they're dispatched democratically to the world. It doesn't work like that, right? These are weird algorithms. I don't know how they set them up, but it is rather weird. I can't say to you what, I, what happens behind the scenes, but it is crazy what happens with these videos. So make sure that you like and if you subscribe. I see a lot of people watching the videos and they're not subscribing. The majority of the people who are viewing are, have not yet subscribed. So please subscribe to the videos that you can not, don't be selfish now, be unselfish so the video can be sent and can be shared to many people. Before I started uploading videos, my own personal videos, I used to send people, I send my friends a lot of, and families, a lot of videos that I consider to be pertinent and to be relevant, right? Because I don't want to be selfish. I want to share the information with as many people as possible. And I have presented some very important information. You need to share the videos. You need to interact with the videos. You need to say thanks to the people who have made the videos because encouragement sweetens labor. And what is happening on YouTube, particularly now, is not an easy job. But what people are doing behind making these videos and what they have to do with all of this algorithm changes. The bigger channels, yes, they, you know, they are moving on because they have passed that threshold. But for those of us who are just recently up and coming and the changes in the YouTube algorithm, it's not an easy task. I can tell you that. It is not an easy task, right? And if you are not strong, you will stop making videos immediately. You have to have, a, psychologically, you have to be strong, right? To continue this sort of undertaking, All right? So this is what I saw in the news and I thought of sharing with you the Dominican troops, not the Dominican troops, sorry, the Kenyan troops, I beg your pardon, are now on the ground of Haiti, right? And so that multinational, military force, they uh, they have arrived, right? And we are hearing also that there have, you know, we have Asian gang members on the loose, on the run in the Jamaican Republic, right? So we are not sure if these gang members will be found and will be sent back to Haiti, will be repatriated back to Haiti, or that or if you'll have some of these gang members going to other Caribbean nations. I am not sure. But it's my joy, it's my privilege to inform you, to keep you up to date with what is happening in the world. Thank you so much for joining. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Ciao.